Hi, I'm Latte. This channel is about live techno performances, motivational stuff and tech talk. Hello creative person, today I want to talk to you about how to create habits to improve yourself. And I want to talk to you about the Digitect, Digitect, I don't know. Anyhow, I use it and I want to talk to you about how I use it in my Melodic Live Techno set. Today I want to talk to you about creating habits. Habits you can use to get better at what you do, making music making video or whatever creative thing you like to do and uh, I, want, I want to tell you something about where they come from um, what they exactly are and how you can use them to get better at what you do and in my case getting better at shooting videos uh, making melodic techno uh, preparing live performances and there's a lot of stuff going on so I need to grow some habits to, um, well, to achieve my goals, right? And besides that, I want to talk to you about the Digitect. I use it in several ways. I squeeze the hell out of it uh, using MIDI tracks, drum sampling, uh, par parameter locks, trigger locks, um, you name it. I want to show you how I use it for my melodic techno set. So, the thing I want to talk to you about is habits. What are considered to be habits? Well, on a behavioral level, habits are things you don't actively think about. When you're um, waking up, getting out of bed, make up your bed, brush your teeth, put on clothes, maybe do some breakfast, prepare lunch, um, get some coffee, um, grabbing your coat and step in your car, drive to work, and then realizing, well, how did I get there? I get here from the point of waking up. I didn't actually think about what I did. It's a kind of ritual, right? And then you're at work, you're doing stuff on autopilot also, and the day goes by. You're going back home greet your family, do all the things you usually do. And there are some moments you have to actively think about what you do, for example, at work or when you're being creative, creating something. and Or maybe there's a, a situation on the road that requires your active attention. But besides that, your whole life is... Um, chained by events that you don't actively think about and well that's a good thing what's the function of autopilot let's say let's call it auto autopilot well if you don't have to actively think about things you don't have to um, reinvent them in your mind you you don't have to think about anymore how to how to make your coffee how to drink it knowing you need to let it cool it down or else you're going to burn your, your tongue, right? Um, if you have to think of all that every time over and over, well, you're going to be exhausted. It takes a lot of time and effort to, to do so. So, how are these habits created? Well, on a neurological level, you're doing something that works. You're um, you're getting a, a positive feedback loop. And every time you're doing that thing, anticipation grows. So that's the function of dopamine, actually. A lot of people think it's a reward neurotransmitter, but it actually is a, a craving neurotransmitter because it's not the actual reward that releases dopamine it's it's the anticipation of the reward that releases dop dopamine i think you can relate to it because 
well, you're were saving for this piece of gear you badly wanted in your studio. Finally, finally it arrived. You've been excited. And then it's in your studio, you hooked it up, turned on power, you played with it a couple of minutes, and the whole rush is gone. Well, and that's not a bad thing. It's it's still a bad it's it's still a badass piece of gear. But this is actually how gas works. This is why you have gas. It's not the gear you want, it's the craving you're after. Because if you're give in to this great craving, something good will happen. Like getting a piece of gear or uh, a nice comment from uh, from your spouse. This is how uh, social media works. You want a reward, but it's actually the craving. So you get your phone, look on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, whatever you use, in anticipation to find something you like. And when you like it, the dopamine is gone. So you want another shot. And there you have it. You want your phone again because you're craving. And it, and dopamine, that's actually the, the, the thing it does. Dopamine creates craving. And it leads us to build habits. And, well, in case of social media and, and dopamine addiction, it, it can be a bad thing. But you can also use it in your own advantage. If you say to yourself, every day, at five o'clock, I'm going to do something with music. It doesn't matter what, um, investing in knowledge, listening to music and analyzing it, how are song structures, how are the frequencies uh, divided, what sounds are used, um, how did they create tension and how did they make the drop, what kind of drops are there, well, you get it. It doesn't matter what you do, as long as you do it. The only thing, the only way to get things done is by doing them, right? So, if you make it a habit out of doing something with music every day at the same time, in time, there's, there won't be any question about, am I going to do something with music? No. What am I going to do with music? Because... I know this is time, I, I blocked this time frame for me to do something with music. And, well, you have to uh, communicate that with your the, your family members. And at this time, you can't disturb me because I want to get better. And I hope you can facilitate that for me. So... How can you use all this in daily life? Like I said, block some time, make new habits, listen to techno everywhere, in your car, on your pods, on your whatever, convince your spouse to also listen to techno, go to parties, um, everything you do. And you feel, fill your brain with, with the topics you want to get better at, you will get better at it. Reward yourself so you get that positive feedback loop even even if you're sitting down and you're feeling frustrated and there's no inspiration um, sit down get to that half half an hour or whatever your goal set is set at so you can reward yourself so you can get that positive feedback loop by explicitly saying to yourself and reviewing why it was the right thing to do. Okay, maybe nothing got out of your hands in that half an hour you sat, but you did it. So that's a good thing. And next time you want to achieve something again. So you want that craving getting started. This is how you uh, trick your brain in loving to do difficult things and what's also important is you want to create small steps doing difficult things sounds easy but it's 
it's really not and you want to get you take small steps and compare yourself to who you were yesterday and do do a little bit better today and if it didn't work out do it again tomorrow so you can get in a positive flow and if and get that feedback loop and in the end you will get that craving to do stuff this is how successful people succeed in the things they do it's not yes it's it's also about talent but it's putting in the work learn how to do difficult things discipline yourself and developing yourself taking responsibility for the thing you want to own so do it So the other thing I want to talk to you about is the Digitech and how I, how I use it in my live melodic techno setup. Um, it's the heart of my setup and, and it's very important to me. I, I really, really like the machine. and uh, It's uh, taking care of all the, the MIDI sequencing for the base station, the peak, even the TD3 and analog 4 is doing it, its own sequencing but uh, the Digitex is also sending out program changes to all the devices even the, the source audio collider pedal I use so I can um, use it in my sound design and do a per patch uh, switch per, per, um, per pattern switch if I like and I think it's an extreme capable machine. It's also somewhat limited, but um, well, I think for creati creativity you have to be somewhat limited to be creative to get around those spots you actually don't like and you they are a bit irritating sometimes. But in the end, I think it's an awesome machine and. I want to show you how I use it in my live setup, so let's get over there. So welcome to my live set. Um, this is the case I take with me when, I, when I'm performing live. It more or less always has the same setup. Um, I sold the overdrive pedal, I think it was sucking all of the juice out of the TD3, so it had to go. I am uh, contemplating on uh, getting a MXR Distortion Plus. Let me know in the comments if you have a nice recommendation for a, for a good distortion that doesn't suck all the life out of the TD3. Um, my Novation Base Station 2, Novation Peak, Analog 4. Uh, source audio collider delay plus reverb dual digital delay um, from Strymon it's the dig and the TD3 is going through it my trusty zone DB2 sounds awesome it's really fast and hands on and reliable I, I love it and at last but certainly not the least my beloved Electron Digitech it's the longest in my setup. I love it the most. It's versatile, it's limited, and it's what I like about it. And you have to get your head around it. Um, you have to put in some miles before you can uh, really understand and uh, let it work for you because it has some limitations, which, well, sometimes are a bit annoying. Um, especially when it comes to polyphony but hey sometimes you have to get around those obstacles right the Digitec is uh, doing all the drums for me I I wanted to have a drum computer for a long time but I'm still returning to the Digitec because it's so hands-on and fast to work with and I'll show you a few examples for, on how I use uh, these drums 
the bottom row is uh, providing a MIDI for all uh, the devices you see here. Um, MIDI clock, program changes, uh, MIDI CCs and of course uh, notes. And I structure it basically always the same. Um, track 9 and 10 are always for the base station, 12 is for the Novation Peak, 13 is doing nothing, 14 is um, doing the TD3, track 11 is doing the Collider. Uh, it accepts program changes and it's shooting program changes to it. You can see it here every time I trigger a new pattern the new program is shot into well basically everything it needs to get. So um, why I use two uh, tracks for the base station uh, they, they are both on channel 3 which is the, ba is the base station on um, I used to do I, I like to do uh, some variations and when I'm building a, a track I'm using only one pattern and after that I'm gonna break it down into eight patterns for one song and I like to do some um, melodic variations so uh, I can uh, using the pattern mutes I can choose which variation I am using the variation from tr track 9 or track 10 so I can be a little more creative do build, build some tension with uh, melodics and well that's the way I, I do it um, the base station is also sequenced by the Digitect I don't use the internal sequencer because I hate it and I refuse to learn it maybe I should but well I'm stubborn, I think. So it listens to accents remotely and by velocity. I believe it's above 100 velocity. Um, it responds to accents, and by choosing your note length, note length, you can choose if you want to have overlapping notes, so it it makes slides. So I think this is much faster and. Well, I like it better like this, and I think it it's capable of making excellent TD three three or three bass lines. It's providing clock for everything uh, except the Strymon. That's getting a, a a gate output on the tap temp external tap tempo, and well, that's it. And the track I'm going to use today is uh, track number four of my live set, and it sounds a bit like this. So, on track one, I'm always using my kick. It's a... Uh, it's a custom made kick, it has a lot of frequencies in it and it pounds really hard on a, on a big system. I always use the same kick and this is why. I'm not tuning uh, the kick to uh, the key I'm playing in because I'm always playing in D minor and the lowest note I use in for basses in D minor um, it's just a little bit above the bass frequency the, uh, of the kick. So they're not competing. So every time you get a, on a bigger system, you can always rely on uh, not to have a muddy low end. Because when, when you're in a club, sometimes the tracks the DJs play are, well, they, they don't always have good kicks. And... I just think it doesn't sound very good. So I use the same kick in, and I'm playing in D minor and actually it's a little bit detuned uh, compared to the key I play. So the kick sounds like this. And then I'm using an open hi-hat And if you want to make it more 
pretty. Track two. You want to make it more gritty, you can do a bit of bit reduction. So an overdrive. Nothing special, right? I'm always um, I like to use uh, a dotted eight uh, delay on it because it gets this techno train moving, and well, techno is for me is boarding the train, and well, the world stopped turning for me, and there's just techno. Open hi hat, uh, close hi hat. I'm sorry. Uh, solo it out, it sounds like this. And you can hear it moving a little bit. And I use, I like to use the LFOs on the Digitech. And in this case, I'm using uh, an LFO on the attack of the hi-hat. And as you can see in the screen, uh, it's not starting exactly on the same point. So it's, it has a bit of more of a natural feel to it. And I like that and it, it keeps, it helps to uh, liven up the, the drum section. Then I, there's some percussion on track five. And percussion helps to get a bit more of a groove and also leaves a little bit more room for stereo information because the most important bits of my tracks I like to do well mono oriented there has it has to be mono compatible so hi-hats and kicks and claps well claps can have a delay too but this has more panning in it yes you can hear on track six, I always use a ride. And the way I use uh, uh, this is track six. The most important spot is the offbeat, I think. And let me get this. The decay of the offbeat is longer, so when I so it sounds actually like this. But I like to fill up the rest of the spots, but shorten them. And oh, this also helps uh, to get this uh, this techno train rolling, right? And together with the other it grooves. You can dance to this. Even there when there's no bass line. Speaking of which, when I add a bass line, take out the TD3. It's a kind of a slow bass bass line. It's the beginning of the set, so not too much speed. So let's turn down those knobs a little bit. Adding a turn down the delay a little bit, and the DD3 sounds really creamy through this uh, little pedal here. It's, 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 it's an unbelievable thing. I, I don't know how Shryman does it, but the things they make always sound. I can't explain why they sound so good, but mostly what I've heard they sound really really good so there's that there's a little bit of a growl going on on the in the bass line on the end of four track two i'm using a, a bit of metallic uh, noisy track so i can build more tension track three has a bagio get things a bit more atmospheric, a little bit more movement. Take it out. So here's an innovation peak here. I've got a beautiful bed I made. It's really 
nice and rich and ambient and uh, like I used to, I like used to do. What I like to uh, and what I like to do with um, is uh, do some filter modulation with oscillator three. Uh, it gets it gives some textures and a nice edge to it, and it really comes to life. I really love it. Then uh, the. Base station is also playing its part, and the base station, and together with uh, the Source Audio Collider, uh, I use for my signature sounds. Uh, they don't have a lot of bass unless I want to. I can dial in some sub oscillator, even turn it down an octave. So if I want an epic break or sound or well, my analog 4 is not doing what it's supposed to, I can always add a little bit of sub oscillator. And the low end is always filtered out on the pedal. So, everything together, it sounds like this. In the end, I'll uh, I'll do a little jam. <laughs> 